The high-stakes world of Formula One is synonymous with controversy. Controversies in Formula One can stem from something as simple as two cars clashing or something as complex as corporate espionage. They sometimes fizzle out, but given the stakes, some end in tragedy. Here are the most rude and controversial moments in F1. Crashgate 2008 Crashgate is a well-known phrase because it refers to the controversy surrounding the deliberate crash at the 2008 Singapore Grand Prix. During the first ever Singapore Grand Prix, Nelson Piquet Jr. was driving a Renault R28 when it collided with the wall on the outside of Turn 17 on Lap 14. Piquet Jr. might have had the blood of a three-time world champion rushing through his veins, but at the time, he was just starting out as a driver, so the accident may have seemed like nothing more than an accident. After PK had crashed into the wall, the safety car was promptly sent out, which was fantastic news for PK's teammate, Fernando Alonso. Having made an early pit stop, Alonso moved to first place when his competitors scrambled into the pits under safety car conditions. Alonso never relinquished the lead and won the race. When PK was in danger of losing his driver's seat in 2009, the truth came out, and the incident was revealed by PK's father to be the machinations of Reynolds' team principal, Flavio Briatore and Reynolds engineering director, Pat Simons. PK went to NASCAR and later Formula E. Briatore was banned indefinitely from any FIA sanctioned event, while Simons received a five-year ban. In 2010, the FIA lifted its ban on Flavio Briatore and Pat Simons' five-year ban was cut by three years. Senna and Prost, 1989 and 1990. The most famous rivalry in Formula One history was between Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost. The two great race car drivers appeared to have a cordial relationship at first, but that perception began to shift during their intense competition against one another as McLaren teammates in 1989. During that year, Prost made it known to the public that he was getting tired of Senna's intimidating and aggressive racing on the track. As a result, when it came down to the penultimate race of the season at Suzuka, with the World Championship on the line, Prost turned on his teammate in an attempt to take them both out of the race and seal the World Championship for himself. Following the collision, Senna made his way slowly back to the pits, where he had his damaged McLaren repaired. After going on to win the race, the Brazilian driver was then controversially disqualified, which gave Prost the opportunity to win the championship. Senna was justifiably enraged when he learned that the Frenchman Jean-Marie Balestre, who was the president of the FIA at the time, was suspected of showing favoritism to Prost. Senna swore to get retribution, which he did at the very same circuit the following year. Both Prost and Senna had qualified on the front row for the race, with Senna taking the pole position. This time, Prost drove for Ferrari, and Senna was racing for McLaren. Senna was, for some reason, made to start from the dirty side of the grid. When Prost's Ferrari passed him at the start, Senna kept his foot buried and placed them both in the gravel trap at Turn 1, which allowed him to win the championship. You're enjoying this video, right? You definitely don't want to miss out on other amazing videos, so all you have to do is hit the subscription button. It's that easy. Thanks for doing that. Let's move on. Spygate 2007 One of the most exciting and controversial incidents that the sport of Formula One has ever seen occurred during the exhilarating three-way duel for the driver's title in 2007. It was contested by Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen that took place during the 2007 season. The improbable setting of a copier business in the vicinity of working in the United Kingdom is where the tale starts. In June of 2007, Trudy Coghlan, who was married to Mike Coughlin, a McLaren engineer, sauntered into document image processing carrying a 780-page dossier full of confidential information on Ferrari's technology. Trudy hadn't factored in the possibility that the person working at the copy shop that day might be a rabid Ferrari fan who immediately informed Marinello. Coughlin obtained the Ferrari dossier through Nigel Stepney, a Ferrari engineer dissatisfied with his lack of promotion following Ross Braun's departure in 2006. As a result of the admissions made by the photocopier, McLaren was deemed to have committed industrial espionage and was consequently fined a record-breaking amount of $100 million and expelled from the 2007 Constructors' World Championship. In addition, Renault F1 was revealed to possess technical data belonging to McLaren. However, no action was taken against them. The story has a sad and tragic ending after Stepney was killed in an accident with another vehicle on the M20 highway in May 2014. Even though the coroner ruled that the cause of Stepney's death was open, the general public has a firm belief that he committed suicide. Schumacher and Villeneuve, 1997. Jerez 1997 was undoubtedly the worst black stain on Michael Schumacher's glittering career. The 1997 Drivers' Championship was on its final lap, and Michael Schumacher was doing everything he could to win Ferrari's first title since Jody Schechter in 1979. 
In a strange turn of events, Jacques Villeneuve, Michael Schumacher and Heinz Harold Frentzen all finished qualifying at the exact same time at Jerez. However, Villeneuve started the race from the pole position since he was the first of the three drivers to finish his lap. When the lights went out for the championship deciding race on Sunday, Michael Schumacher swiftly passed Jacques Villeneuve. Despite this first setback, Villeneuve recovered admirably, placing enormous pressure on Schumacher by towering huge in his Ferrari mirrors for 47 laps. In the next lap, which was number 48, Villeneuve made his move. At Drysack Corner, the Canadian charged up the inside of Schumacher's Ferrari and made contact with the driver. When Villeneuve was close behind, Michael Schumacher made a U-turn and intentionally crashed the front wheel of his Ferrari into the side pod of Villeneuve's Williams in an effort to knock Villeneuve out of the race. Schumacher's cunning strategy to win the race backfired spectacularly when he crashed into the gravel trap. Villeneuve went on to win the championship after Schumacher crossed the finish line in third place in his broken Williams. After the event, the media all over the globe criticized Schumacher and he was thrown out of the 1997 standings but allowed to keep his wins. Vittorio Brambilla, 1975 Because of his exceptionally abrasive driving style, Vittorio Brambilla was dubbed the Monza Gorilla. While qualifying for the 1975 Swedish Grand Prix, Brambilla, competing for March, won his one and only pole position. This was also the first pole position for his team in more than five years. Spectators were astounded. Nevertheless, Brambilla's race engineer Robin Hurd later disclosed that the Italian driver's aggressive driving was not the factor that contributed to him securing pole position on that particular day. Hurd claimed that during the qualifying session, he was entrusted with Brambilla's pit board and noted that March's pit box was adjacent to the timing beam across the circuit. When Brambilla was still approximately 50 yards from the finish line, Hurd made the decision to use his pit board to destroy the timing beam. After taking the lead for the first 15 laps of the Grand Prix, Vittorio was eventually forced to pull out of the race due to a mechanical issue. Team orders for Barrichello and Schumacher, 2002. In 2002, Michael Schumacher held a commanding lead in the championship standings when going into the fifth event of the season, the Austrian Grand Prix, which took place at what was then known as the A1 ring. In the race's latter stages, he could not pass his teammate, the Brazilian Rubens Barrichello, who was in first place. Barrichello had not won a race since the middle of the 2000 season. Schumacher was well positioned to extend his lead in the championship as he continued to run in second place, while his brother Ralph, who was his closest opponent, was behind him. The most logical thing to do in this situation would be to instruct the drivers to hold the station, but Ferrari gave the order to Barrichello to let Schumacher pass with approximately eight laps to go in the race. After that, a debate reportedly took place, during which Barrichello told the then Ferrari team principal, Jean Todt, that he wouldn't yield. Todd then told Barrichello that he'd be fired if he didn't yield. The winner wasn't determined until the very final turn of the race. Barrichello slammed on the brakes 100 meters before the finish line. Schumacher, who instantly recognized how unfavorable this was, tried to slow down even further but still managed to pass his teammate and take the win. The FIA did not approve of this practice and so outlawed team orders. 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix Last but not least, we will conclude with the astonishing events that took place in Abu Dhabi last year. Both Hamilton and Verstappen ended the last race of the season tied with 369.5 points. When Hamilton narrowly missed out on pole position in qualifying, the Dutchman started in pole position. However, the Englishman was quick out of the blocks and snuck ahead of Verstappen to claim the lead on lap one. He kept that position for most of the race, although temporarily switching places with his competitor's teammate Sergio Perez. It appeared as though he would cruise to an easy victory. That was the case up until lap 52 of the 58 race, when the lowly Nicholas Latifi crashed late in the race, forcing the safety car onto the track, severely cutting down Hamilton's lead and allowing Verstappen to breathe down Hamilton's neck suddenly. The dispute escalated after FIA director Michael Massey continuously let the lap cars between the title rivals pass, which left Hamilton and Verstappen in a one-lap shootout for the title and within touching distance of one another. And the guy who prevailed in the last moments was the 25-year-old owing to fresh tyres, leaving Mercedes and F1 fans across the world in disbelief. What other moments in F1 do you consider the most controversial moment in the history of the sport? Let me know in the comment section below. That will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. See you in the next video.